if there are loopholes in the criminal justice system, it will all fall. And all that I'm speaking about is based on the Global Corruption Report. This is not in any way to question the judiciary. Are what you questioning the independence of our judiciary? Some will say that your, your statements are politically reckless and that you are attempting to interfere in the operations of an independent institution. The judiciary used the term undermine and erode their independence. No, definitely not. And I, and I told you, if in any way it was interpreted, the interpretation that they, that they presumed that I was trying to imply that our judicial process and the judiciary is involved in corruption, I humbly apologize. That is not what I said. But however, that no arm should... You always speak about, you know, people always speak about the police is corrupt. I have never heard a, a statement from a commissioner of police um, questioning this. You, you, you hear statements about politicians are corrupt. You, you don't hear the political parties making a statement. If it is that there that are accusations of the judiciary, it doesn't mean that the, that, that is a fact. But we have had situations before. And all I am saying is that these are aspects that need to be dealt with at all levels. And no, um, no arm, no group, no organization must be in such a position that they cannot be questioned. And questioning that has nothing to do with interference in, 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 their, in their work. Again, I, at no time did I mention that the judiciary, our judiciary, is involved in that. And if it is that they, that, that was what their interpretation was, I humbly apologize. It was the law enforcement agencies. They are the ones that stated there was an assassination plot. They are the ones who provided the intelligence. They are the ones who made the recommendation to intensify the security around prime minister and other cabinet officials. They are the ones who decided to increase the national security alert state because of this situation. It is not the government of Trinidad and Tobago. And we can even look at Mr. Patrick Manning. He should be the last to talk from the Mr. Big to being so paranoid and lack, having the lack of trust and confidence in our law enforcement agencies. He fired them to bring in private security persons because he thought everyone wanted to kill him. And he should not have been worried because the criminal elements, they, they, they enjoyed when Mr. Manning was there. He, they, they will get free lunches and uh, free lunch in, in, in um, Crown Plaza. They will not have any concern about their business being affected. And now we, we have a situation where the Prime Minister, because of a political will, there would be reprisal. There would be this situation where the criminal elements, their, their business is now being affected. And, and this, this is what is happening. Dr. Ali, the recommendation to heighten the security situation was made by the law enforcement agencies of Trinidad and Tobago. Are you saying that you do not trust the information? I, I don't. I really don't know what Griffith is talking about. I, honestly, I can't. I can't comment on, on, on his, his, his statements. I mean, if you have information about the threat, then one expects that you would react to it. That doesn't mean that you convert it into political self-serving statements. Some we, 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 we. Let me tell you what I expect to happen in Trinidad and Tobago. If a threat comes to the attention of the security services, it's handled in a way as not to portray the country as some fortress banana republic, right? And that's how we were portrayed last Thursday, right? With political explanations and political point scoring which in the end damage our image as a... Some have uh, accused you of the same thing. And prove that. That you're saying that, that what, your what, statements what, were reckless. Which one? Which one of my statements? Saying that it was political hysteria on the part of the, of the partnership um, and that the threat, obviously, the Prime Minister and the security forces had rationale or reasons to make this action or to recommend this action. I maintain that it was handled hysterically. I, I'm not saying that you don't have something to deal with, but because you have something to deal with does not mean that you have to create hysteria and the prime minister's statement had within, within a matter of minutes right we went from not knowing about this matter or hearing the rumors of a call up of reserves and all kinds of things because since wednesday last week we were hearing that there was something happening mm -hmm. and the security services were responding to it okay that's normal you didn't hear me say anything on wednesday if the security services are having to treat with something that is their job and if, they, if it requires heightened security, that's their job. That was Wednesday. By Thursday, it was becoming clear what they were dealing with. We were hearing about a plot against the head of government. By Thursday evening, we had the prime minister basically telling us about what one got the impression that this thing was signed, sealed, and delivered, right? The bottom line is we are dealing with an investigation, and let's wait to see what the investigation throw up. What he just thrown up? Today is what today is Tuesday of the following week. By Tuesday of the following week, it's thrown up. Skepticism across the country because the, the things were so convenient that one has to ask, is this convenient? Is it real? These are, these are genuine questions. Why is it that so many people have that question? I'm not the only person with that question. And then when one looks back at 
what is being delivered. It begs the question, is this what it is all about? And if the answer is yes, then I'm even more skeptical. Former Minister in the Ministry of National Security, Subhash Pandey, if you have information um, that can be used about an assassination plot against the Prime Minister, action must be taken immediately. The Prime Minister, in her wisdom, probably thought it was an occasion to alert the public. So, and don't wait until the matter happens, for example, as what occurred with Benazir Bhutto and Leo Devines. Well, one could make that, that kind of comment, but I mean, it doesn't mean that because you've had, you know, an experience in one way that you go to the extreme in the other way. You have to deal with each situation on its merit. That's all, that's all he's saying. Deal with it on its merit. We've had 1990. It doesn't mean that you come, you know, you, you, you do what you do and say, well, okay, since we've had 1990, anytime we hear a whisper, a rumor, you know, about a plot that we, can, we create this kind of reaction. The whole world changed the after the, the attacks in the United States in September of that year, that hateful year, and some can say that since then, any alert is given, any threat to state is given precedence. Would you not say that the events of 1990 should, uh, as a result, change the manner in which we handle threats in this country? What, what are you, um, I'm not saying that at all. It is not the first time, and I'm sure it won't be the last time, that somebody would be generating for the attention of the security services an interest that somebody's wanting to harm somebody. How do you treat with it in a sane and sober way? You don't begin to convert it immediately into trying to get a political advantage. Understand something. Go back to the Prime Minister's statement. The statement opened with a justification for the state of the emergency. That's what it was. The statement, by the time she was 10% into the statement, she was giving you the outturn of the state of the emergency. She was talking about hitting people in their pockets. Now that we are identifying individuals in this alleged plot, one would have to see whether in fact they had pockets to be hit and whether their pockets were in fact hit and whether in fact their motives. Because once you start talking about motive, last week Thursday we had a motive clear motive as to why the Prime Minister came on the trip. The Prime Minister is saying that this has nothing to do with the state of emergency and that well, this is not a rationale for the extension of, are you saying that she's If it she's doesn't have unstable? anything to do with the state of emergency, why are people detained under this emergency? Why are they charged? Why are they charged for committing a crime again of trying to kill somebody, any citizen? Why are they detained under emergency powers? And this is the question I asked at the beginning. Had we not been under a state of emergency, what, how, would, how would we have dealt with this situation? Dr. Rowley, if you were Prime Minister, you are the leader of the opposition, the alternative government of Trinidad and Tobago, the security forces came to you and said, we have information that there is a viable threat to you, to the stability of this government. How would you handle the situation? I would allow the security services to do their work. And when they have solid information to present to the country, information will be presented to the country in a sane and sober way. Clearly, the security services were onto something. What that something is, we don't know yet. But before we could find out what that something is, we had the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago last Thursday creating an international news item, right, which was damaging to the country. And that item was couched largely in a justification for the state of emergency, trying to provide answers which were not provided before. Those answers were, there were attempts to provide those answers on the heel of this assassination plot. Dr. Rado, we do have to take a very short break. When we come back from this break, we're going to continue this conversation. Do stay with us. I have today, 20th, 28th November 2011, signed detention orders with respect to four of the detained personnel. Similar documents are being prepared in respect of the others so detained. And according to legal advice provided, additional detention orders may be served. By then, we should have sufficient evidence to pursue the matters. If we don't, well, then they have to be released. As we speak, that is being considered. Yes, I agree. I totally agree. But then what do you do? Stay underground forever? It doesn't make sense. As a former soldier, it, it, not only as a chief of defense staff, but as a former soldier, it, 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 it grieves one to understand, or to try to understand you know, here we are with someone who has pledged to, to serve the state, to give his life for the state at some time, um, you now is alleged to be involved in other activity against that same state that nurtured him. 
Dr. Ali, how would you respond to criticism that you're trying to insult the competence of the security intelligence agencies in this country, that you were part of a, a party at then the P former administration, the former PNM administration, that the then Prime Minister Patrick Manny did not trust the security services of this country and instead had a million dollar private security bill? I wouldn't, I wouldn't waste time trying to respond to the Griffiths diatribe. I'm dealing with a specific matter in front of us today. Let me tell you what I'm looking at right now having heard the Minister of National Security, who in fact, as far as I'm concerned, is the person who should really be telling us some specifics on this matter. In his attempt, which is welcome, to speak on the matter, I'm no clearer as to where we're at, except that there's some kind of investigation taking place. And that investigation has not yet generated sufficient, solid evidence for the government to act against persons is the minister himself talking about the possibility of them being released? It would be quite an interesting development if after the Prime Minister's statement of last Thursday, we come to a situation where the identified perpetrators are released. Because then one will ask them at that stage, what was this all about? On the other hand, on the other hand, there's the possibility and there's the likelihood and there's the ability of the government to extend a state of emergency over the whole country so as to allow a detention order to remain in force over these people of interest. On the other hand, if there's evidence that these people are involved in this heinous conspiracy, then we expect that they'll be charged and there'll be no need for an emergency to be extended so as to have them detained. These are the complexities of the issue. You see, Gary Griffith, it is time somebody tell Gary Griffith that he is not to get involved in matters that are outside of his job spec. He is so-called security advisor to the Prime Minister. He has got this country into enough trouble already. And I'm not going to be responding to Gary Griffith. That's why I call for the Minister of National Security, the person holding the portfolio, to talk to the nation. The Minister has attempted to do that. I hope he'll do that as we go up in the coming week, days, weeks and months, because this matter is going to go forward in a way that we expect solid information and clarity. Dr. Raleigh, what did you not hear? I know that you said that you will not be revealing what you discuss, what was discussed at that briefing. You came out from that meeting obviously unimpressed. What did you want to hear? So the Prime Minister has, has taken a risky move and she's come out in in full disclosure to the public and some are saying that her credibility is at stake um if the persons if this entire thing fails if on december 5th and the detention order expires the soe is not extended these persons are released the, the prime minister will lose face she obviously has rationale to believe that these charges can be can there are charges to be stuck against these persons well